Today, we're going to build this effect. I'm calling it Interactive Exploding Mesh. That's it. Let's dive in. We're going to start from this basic template, and we're going to break it down into four steps. Yep, four steps. We're going to load a model, and then we're going to color all the vertices on that model. Then we're going to use a shader material, and lastly, add mouse interactivity. The first thing I want to do is load a model. Here's how I want to do that. I'm going to create a new loader. Const loader is equal to a new OBJ loader. Okay, let's let's import that. Um, import OBJ loader from okay no errors we're good there let's actually wire up this wow 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 let's wire this up um i like to add i like to add a manager a uh, new three dot loading manager like so and then give the manager an on init function. Wait, on load, sorry. And give it this init scene. Like that. Now you have to tell the loader that it has a manager. Let's write the load method. So loader dot load and we're going to tell it what to load, which will be dot models slash, uh, slash head dot obj, and then pass in a callback method, callback function. That callback function will be this, beautifully done. So I'm just defining a geometry variable. I'm traversing a handy method to go over the contents of that OBJ, OBJ file and say, oh, do you have a mesh? Good. It's geometry is my geometry. I'm going to add that to this const scene data equals geometry. Whoops, I don't need a material. Like that. Now... I can, hang on a second, and it's scene is dot defined. I like that it's still going though. Here's the end of my init scene method and here's the start of it, function init scene. And it's gonna take that data. I can just format that so it's nicer. Now I wanna use that geometry that I'm loading rather uh, const geom is equal to data. Uh, I did, it did not work. Poop. Um, let's see if we can figure out why. Property geom, uh, not defined. Oh, I didn't pass it in. Scene data. That's better. Um, it's a little bit high right now. So let's center it up. Um, geometry dot center. And it's less high. I want to scale it up a little bit too. mesh dot scale dot set scalar two. How do you feel about that? Feeling pretty good. Is three just wild? I'll make it two and a half. I think I'm gonna change that rotation a bit. Um, I don't need it to be doing that. Whatever, if I close this, it'll get bigger too. Let's color the geometry, Let's call it the vertices. 
Oh, I guess I'm wearing this now. Okay, we're now going to create an array of colors that we use as vertex colors for this shader. Right now we have a color defined as yellow, but we can pass in an array of colors and tell the shader to for an interesting effect. Let's start by figuring out the number of faces we need. Then create an array for the colors. Create a kind of temporary color that I'll use again and again. Now a for loop to loop over all of those faces. This is, I don't need that. I do need this. We're going to calculate the light, uh, making it random. And I'm going to set the HSL, the hue, saturation, and lightness, to this blue color, fully saturated, and that random lightness. What am I going to do now? For each face, I'm going to give each vertex a color. I'm going to extract that color and then apply it to Wow, look at that, index plus three times i. So the current index plus three equals the r. The current index, that's interesting. Do you see me waving my hands over here? These will apply the colors to each vertex, the same color to uh, each vertex of a given. After I've created the array, I'm gonna set this color attribute on my geometry and pass in colors. Save it and no colors. But if I vertex colors is true, see y'all. And if I pump up the contrast here, make this three, seven, see lots of contrasting. That in itself is a pretty cool effect, I'd say. Okay, and oh, I don't like that hue. Let's make it red instead. That's scary. Where's that intensity on there a little bit? So that in itself is pretty cool, but there's more. Um, let's format this. Great. Um, in addition to setting this custom color property, I'm going to duplicate this line and set a displacement. This is going to, this is going to allow us to, so cool. Sorry. This displacement attribute is going to allow us to blow our geometry up, our model up. Uh, displacement. So let's create this displacement array. I'll do it right here, right below colors. Placement, the same. So let D equal some value, some random value. I like that better, 10 times, boom. Now let's set this, this displacement. I'm gonna use the same measurement here. all of these get the value of like that boom and there should be no change because we're still just using a standard material what we need to do instead is to use a shader material just like this shader material and you're going to pass in uniforms and a vertex shader and a fragment if you don't know about shaders or how to use them, just stick with me. I hope that to make this explanation very simple so you can use them, if not create them. So I also want to pass in uniform. What the hell are uniforms? Uniforms are properties you feed to a shader. Um, a like time is, feed that to the shader and make something change over time. In this case, we're gonna, our uniforms are mouse position, the screen and the light position. This one is optional, light position. You could just hard code that in the shader because it's not changing dynamically. Although we could make it change. Yeah. That's that. Material. So now we have a shader material. 
and let's tell our geometry to use that shader material. Now, this is going to explode. Oh my god, it's actually... Wow, I didn't expect that. I like kind of like that too. Can you... Oh, that's really cool. I didn't expect that. I love unexpected things. Let's make the sprites um, a little brighter. Opacity is 1.0. Now they're super. There, that's brighter. How cool is that? I did not expect this result already. Get rid of this. Um, let's jump over to the HTML page really quick so I can show you the shape. Unlike the usual template I have, this HTML template includes a couple of extra elements, two script elements, this vertex shader script element and this fragment shader text element. This type is an arbitrary string you define, okay? This is convenience. This ID is, is important to allow the script to find this element and grab it and grab its text. Let's, let's do some hand wavy overview of the, of the vertex shader. Um, there's the uniforms that we passed in and here's where I'm using them to, to define this float and that's going to change the position. I, that's all I'm going to say about this. Um, the light position, I'm going to pass that via a varying so many over to the fragment shader and the fragment shader is the one that's going to deal with color and lighting. And so it uses that position here to light property and that light gets calculated into direction. Oh my God. Let's see if there's any errors. See any. Why is it so dark then? Do you know why it's so dark? I know why this, um, my shader is set up looking for this custom color attribute. What if I just change that to color? This. Boom. Now that worked. Great. Why isn't it responding to the mouse, though? I can answer that. Okay, we want to add interactivity to this exploding model. And here's how I want to do that. I'm going to add an event listener, and I want to look for that mouse move event. When the script detects one, I'm going to handle that by setting this vector to pointer pause to the uh, the position of the mouse divided by the window width divided by times two minus one. Oh gosh, it's hand wavy. I'm just going to calculate where that is in normalized coordinates. This is normalized, and let's sure. Const pointer pause. There's pointer. Save it. Nothing. The change to get the um, the cool effect. I'm gonna come in here and say, what's the name of my material again? Uh, shader material dot uniforms. Thank you. Equals pointer pause. Not exactly. Equals x comma y. And I'll pull those x and y values. Let x comma y equal pointer pause. Now I'm deconstructing those and that's it. We did it. That happened faster than I expected. I just think. Here, try different colors. Try another material and use the on before compile method. Ugh. I should, I need to create a video about that and I will. Let me know if, you, if that sounds it. Try another model. Let's do that real quick or an animated model. Um, here's what trying another model looks like. I've included a couple of models in this project. So you hand instead. Can you, I'll be on. Mesh. Da. Mesh dot scale dot set scalar two point oh that'll make it 
Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I've also included a bunny. I think this is the bunny that's found in the 3JS source. Woo! You can play with the degree of displacement too. I've got it set to a value between negative five and five right now. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. What would happen if instead of a random value for that for this displacement, I just made it uh, six? Let's see what that looks like. Wow. That looks really gross. Let me try this. No, it's just this kind of inflated effect. Oh, that's awesome. I like the randomness, though. You could dial that down to one, so it's ever so subtly explosive like that. Just kind of uh, dematerializes a little bit. It's better. Head. You have it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a comment below. Share with your friends. It really helps my channel grow. Let me know in the comments if you have questions or suggestions for a video. You can support me over on Patreon, where you can also leave suggestions for videos as well. And I'll be releasing content early there at some point. Um, that's it. As always, thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next one.